A, so would you expect usage patterns to change um, if, if, in fact, it were legalized across the country? Uh, they would increase. And you, you know that from logic, but also from history. In the 1970s, Alaska uh, <coughs> decriminalized uh, marijuana. And uh, it, it, it increased in usage. Parents got concerned about it. And then in the 90s, they recriminalized it. They went back the other direction because of an increase in use. Uh, you see that <clears throat> also in, uh, well, look at alcohol. Uh, I mean, in, in the comparison is always made about prohibition. Well, when prohibition was lifted, did alcohol consumption increase? Absolutely, without any question. And the same thing would be true with uh, marijuana use. Now, uh, I think you have to be more concerned about what it would do with teenage consumption. And uh, I think you, you look at uh, the experiment with the Netherlands, uh, the indications are that the uh, consumption of, of illegal drugs, marijuana, went up with the uh, decriminalization, and they had tightened it up, closed some of their uh, cannabis coffee houses. California, even with their medical use of it, uh, it's dramatically increased among uh, all groups. So I think it would. So Ethan, what do you say to that? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm and I'm, by the way, yeah. now going to be using the expression "waken and bacon" all the time. But I, <laughs> as, 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 as the father of two little boys, it, it concerns me too. Yeah. What, what, are we going to see spikes in? Well, in well I mean, here's what, let me just uh, uh, clarify a few things Ace has said. I mean, first of all, back in the '70s, 11 states decriminalized the possession of small amounts of marijuana, which means they turned it into a civil fine as opposed to a, something you get arrested for. And what you saw was that marijuana use went up in those states during the 70s. It also went up in the states that did not decriminalize in the 70s. And during the 1980s, it went down in all those states. So the best research on this was an article by a guy named Eric Singel in the 80s in a referee journal basically showed that decriminalization did not have any impact on levels of marijuana use. Similarly, the Netherlands, which you know, legalized, sort of legalized the retail sale of marijuana in the late 70s, early 80s, They've had this coffee shop system now for 30 years, not just in Amsterdam, but almost every city of any size in the country. And marijuana has gone up and down a bit. They've, sometimes the coffee shops, there were too many of them. The government closed down some and back. It's more or less been a stable system for 30 years. Rates of marijuana use right now among young and older people are much lower than they are in the U.S. with our much more repressive policies. They are roughly at the average as far as Europeans go. And a lot of the European countries have more repressive policies. So this notion that liberalization will lead to huge increases, it's not borne out by the evidence. That said, the fact that we're now moving from decriminalization to actually legalizing it and selling it, allowing it to be sold in licensed outlets, which is what Colorado and Washington will do in the next few months if, uh, if Washington, D.C. doesn't say no, I think there is, as ASA says, a risk um, that marijuana use will go up. Right? It'll be less expensive. It'll be easier to get. But I don't think the real risk is among young people. Why? Because there are now three national surveys in which young people say it's easier to get marijuana, easier to buy marijuana today than it is to buy alcohol. Every high school in America, marijuana use is a bit more or less omnipresent. You know, the surveys for the last 30 years, 80% of young people say it's easy to get marijuana. So I don't think that's the group where it's going to go up. If anything, you're going to take away some of that forbidden fruit attraction to marijuana. Where marijuana use is going to go up, it's going to be people in their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. It's going to be older people going, damn, it helps with that arthritis, and I didn't realize it. Or it helps me sleep at night. Or I actually find I prefer it to having a drink at the end of the night. Or you know what, I prefer it to the, to the pharmaceuticals my doctor's giving me for my mood or my anxiety or whatever. So I think that's where we're going to see the increase. It's going to be among older people most of whom are not going to be prone to being addictive or using it in a problematic way, that's where we'll see the likely increase.